for how God has blessed over all of these years that you and I are here to celebrate our nation. Isn't this a pretty auditorium? Yeah. Dean Henthorne put all of this up, climbing and, and hanging it up, and then Dorothy Gwynn come up and straightened him out and put the rest of it up. Okay. Got it all straight, got it all good, and, and we appreciate the work that they did. Uh, but just to remind you, and I'll let you know, uh, this is the way it's going to look for the rest of this month. Okay, We're going to leave all this up through July and just enjoy uh, understanding what this nation is all about. But we're glad that you're here to worship with us. It's a little bit different order uh, than we usually do. We're going to begin with a time of prayer. And then after we pray, we're going to move into the service, and, and it's just going to flow from there. And you're going to be blessed uh, as we honor our nation, but more than that, as we honor our God, the God of this nation. So I hope that you will pray that God will bless us as we gather here today uh, to honor and serve him. We've got some folks just to remind you. Uh, we need to pray this week. Mary Fulton will be going uh, Friday to uh, the hospital in Oklahoma City. Uh, she'll be having some back surgery and hopefully relieving the pain that uh, she's had to deal with. So you pray for Mary on Friday uh, and ask God to bless her and, and to keep her. And then Sue Bishop. Sue uh, is not doing well. And the doctor uh, called the other day and he said they've, tried, they've moved her surgery up to this week. But we don't know when that's going to be. So uh, you keep praying for Sue and pray that God will continue to uh, bless her. And hopefully she'll get a, a date this week and she can get this surgery done and get to feeling better. So you pray for that. And then we want to remember Bob Crawford's family. Uh, Bob's nephew passed away. And so you pray for Bob and uh, his, his brother Steve and their family. And, and just ask God to be close and comfort and bless them. I know there are others that are on your heart. And you'll want to pray for them. We want to pray for today. God's got something special for us as we gather to worship. So as we begin this morning, let's join our hearts together and let's pray. Father, we give you praise and thanks for the privilege to be in your presence. And Father, as we come in your presence, Lord, we, we understand that it's only because of the blood of Jesus that we're allowed. And we thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us. Father, that we might have salvation full and free. But Father, thank you for the sacrifice of many men and women over the years that have kept our nation free and strong. And Father, we ask that you bless now as we uh, honor you and we, Lord, lift up our praises and thanks to you. But Lord, as we remember our country and honor our country, and Father, we pray your blessings on these United States of America. Father, we lift our president to you, our vice president, our cabinet, our Congress. Father, we ask that you would move mightily. Father, every one of those, Lord, they answer to you. And Lord, I pray that you work in their hearts and their minds. I pray, Father, that, that you work for your glory. Father, I pray that you work, Father, that we can see this nation grow and prosper. And Lord, that we will see our nation turn itself back to you. So, Father, I pray that you bless all of those who are leaders that we have elected. Bless our state. Lord, continue to move in the lives of those in our, our city and our county. Father, may you bless them in a special way. Father, we pray for the nation of Israel today. Father, we pray that you are, as you protect them, Lord, that things will begin to change. And, Father, that people will begin to understand that Israel belongs to you. And, Father, you have set them, uh, Lord, in your, in your hands. And, Lord, you're going to take care of them. So, Lord, I, I pray for the peace of Israel today. And, Lord, pray that you bless in, in a mighty way. Father, we want to give you praise and thanks, Lord, for uh, the rain that you've sent us, Lord, and how you've blessed our lands. Thank you, Father, for the rain you're, we're going to receive. Uh, Lord, we understand that there's come a time when this can quit. And, Lord, we just see our, the cracks in the ground grow. But, Father, thank you for filling them up. 
And Lord, we pray that you continue to allow the rain to fall and we give you praise for every blessing. Lord, bless those, Lord, who are having surgery for Mary Fulton. Father, keep her in your arms and Lord, bless her, bless her through this procedure. Father, may it, it be accomplishing your purpose. And Lord, we thank you for your presence with her. For Sue Bishop, Lord, may that day open for her. And Lord, these things can get taken care of where she can be up and back with us and serving again. And Father, we pray for Bob Crawford and his family. We pray for comfort that only you can give, Father, and pray that you bless in a special way. And now, Father, as we enter this service, we pray that all honor and glory be yours. Father, speak through us. Speak to our hearts through every song. Bless Andy, Lord, as he leads us, the instrumentalists as they play. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in this service today. Touch our hearts, change our lives, save our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are glad that you're here. We welcome you and thank you for being a part of us. What we like to do at Central is we like to do what we call love somebody in the name of the Lord. So we want you to stand. Let's greet each other in the name of the Lord this morning. Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service of Central Baptist Church in Pampa, Texas. I'm so glad that you're a part of us today. If you're on Facebook, you can see the flags that are hanging in our auditorium. What a great joy it is to be able to uh, honor our country. And we're doing that today. Our people are dressed in red, white, and blue. And it's, it's just a beautiful sight to see all of those who uh, are dressed, the flags that are hanging. And it's just a great joy to be able to celebrate our nation and thank God for the country that we live in. And I'm glad that you're a part of it today. If you're working today, I'm sure it's awful muddy out there. Be very, very careful. But we appreciate so much you worshiping with us and you encouraging others to worship with us as well. In just a moment, I want you to take your Bible and join me. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, as Jesus closes the Sermon on the Mount, he tells the story of a man who builds on a strong foundation and a weak foundation. And folks, I believe that it's, it's time for us to reestablish the foundation upon which this country was built. And that foundation is Almighty God. So you have your Bible ready. Matthew chapter 7. Let's follow these things along and see what God has to say. I'm so glad that you're a part of us today. We love you in the Lord. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. Y'all sing with me as you find your feet. Love somebody in the name of the Lord. Greet your neighbor with a sign. Let the love of Christ inside you prove. As you walk me down the line. For loving one another is the way of the Lord. Brothers and sisters all are we. Washed in the blood and grounded in the world, living in salvation full and free. All right, y'all go ahead and be seated as you find your seats.
Thank you, Gina and Amy. We would be remiss if we didn't take time to honor our flag and honor our country as we pledge allegiance to our flag. And just to remind you that in that pledge to the flag, we are one nation under God, and we're not afraid to say it here. So I want you to stand with me, and I'm sure you can find a flag. Let's face the flag and let's pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing for the Star Spangled Banner. for a few moments. Let's sing some patriotic songs together. My country tis of the sweet land of liberty of the I see land where my father's and of the pilgrim's cry from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Our fathers, God, to the author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. shall be his footstool and the soul along his way our God is marching on glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah Oh, 
Blessings you start upon us, thank you for this day you give us where we celebrate the birth of our country or the birthday, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, when we thank God bless America, we stop and think you already have, and we just need to remember it. <laughs> Father, we lift up our leaders of our country, we lift up president, our, our country leaders of country, state communities, Lord, that they just seek you and decisions affects us daily. Father, just we just bless ask you bless brother norm brother andy as they lead us and we pray that you be the missionaries near and far lord continue to keep those safe father just may we just remember you each day in our lives that you live in our hearts lord you made us white as snow father we ask you be this offering to be used not to glorify you for we ask this in jesus name amen, amen.
my statue of liberty. It was there that my soul was set free. blessing us. Take your Bible this morning and join me in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. You know, there are times that, that people will ask the question and they'll, they'll say, is America mentioned in the scripture? And my answer to that is always, yes, it is. And if you want to read it, which is just one of others, but one of the verses that has America in it is Psalms 33, 12. And that psalm very simply says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And there we are. Now, if you notice that, that phrase that, that David used as he wrote that, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. If God is not the Lord of that nation, then you take that word blessed out because it doesn't apply. You see, that's a conditional phrase. If God is not Lord, there is no blessing. Okay, you up with me? Do you like what I just said? Me either. But I'm going to tell you, God cannot bless disobedience All right. God cannot bless sin All right. God cannot bless when we try our best to be God he can't bless that he won't bless that so I would like today for us to come back to 3312 and with a smile on our face and our country to say the United States of America is blessed because God is Lord. Okay. Now, there are a lot of people, not a lot, there are some people that every time we come to this patriotic service, uh, they think that I get uh, political and they think that I stand on one side and condemn the other I've got news for you folks I just want you to know something I know what I believe I know what I stand for I know what I think but if you want to know why I do what I do then you read first Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 and he said Paul said to Timothy Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, reject. I don't hate anybody. And I understand what the scripture says about we should pray for the leaders of our nation. You understand that? Romans chapter 13 tells us that we are to pray for the, the leaders of our nation. Paul said it in 1 first, in first Timothy, that we pray for the leaders of our nation, and we should do that. But it does not mean that I agree with everything that goes on. I don't agree with what they think, I don't agree with what they say, and I don't agree with what they're doing. But, I will tell you this, I'm going to preach the word. And what we have to do is understand what the Word says. 
about where we are as a nation and, and what we should be doing. Because, folks, I am convinced that the foundation of this nation is crumbling because we are moving too far away from God. Unless we get God back to where He rightfully belongs, the foundation just crumbles. It's just like leaving a house and walking off and saying, I'm through with it. I'm going over here to this house, and I'm going to make it the house that I live in. If you don't go back and live in that house, and you don't do anything to that house except let it, let it sit there, the house is going to deteriorate, and the foundation will crumble. What I think in my heart today is that we've got to get back living in the house that was built by God and he called it America. United States of America. I am proud to be a citizen of the United States of America. I am proud to live in this country. But folks, I want you to get something in, in, my, in your mind. Because I've, I've heard people say, and you have too, boy, I'm, luck, I'm lucky to live here. No, you're not. You're blessed. All right. All right. And God has blessed you and allowed, you to be, allowed us to be a part of a nation that was built on Almighty God. All you got to do is read history. All you got to do is go back and understand what the, what the historians tell us. And not all of these people that signed this Declaration of Independence and, and people that signed all these other things that started this country, not all of them were good Christian people. But folks, they all agreed on one thing. Without the mercy and the grace and the power of God, there would be no nation. And it built on the Word of God. It was built on the power of God. It was built on according to the will of God. And people were taught and people grew reading the Bible and understanding that all of this comes to us by God. And where are we today? Where are we today? We have people that loathe our military. Remember that phrase? Tell me something, folks. Now, I, I, I didn't serve in the military. I, I didn't. But I see people that, that serve, and I see people that have served. And I, I just want to ask for a minute, how many veterans do we have in here? Just raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. How many veterans do we have? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. We don't need to hate somebody that has gone and stood up and fought for what we believe in this country. We don't need to turn our backs on those and say, we don't like you because you were involved in all of this killing and all of this. Folks, these wars happen, and when they do, it's because of men and women that are willing to go and stand between us and this enemy and to lay down their life and to fight. And to that I say God bless you. Because folks that is what this nation was built on. It was built on God. It was built on the sacrifice of people. It is built on, on the things that God has given to us. And now the foundation is beginning to crumble. And it's time for us to establish that. We tried to put patches on it. Patches are not going to fix the foundation upon which we stand. The foundation itself must remain strong. I was reading the other day, and, and uh, I was reading from Jimmy Draper. And Jimmy Draper said this, and I want you to hear what he said. Anywhere a government is without God, it is a government against God. That made sense, doesn't it? Anywhere a government is without God, it is a government against God. And it will be all through history to history's end. God made the foundations. And He built this country on three foundations. He built it on the foundation of the home. He built it on the foundation of the government. And He built it on the foundation of the church. So where are we today? Look with me in verse 24. 
You're familiar with this. This is the end of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus preached beginning in chapter 5 and verse 1. And he comes and he concludes everything that he said about kingdom living, about being a servant, about being what God wants us to be. He concludes it with this, verse 24. Therefore, which means everything that's come before it, here's what I say. Whosoever hears these sayings of mine and and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house on a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it did not fall because it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does not do them shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and it beat on the house, and it fell. But read the last phrase there. And great was its fall. Did you hear what Jesus said? Here is a man that built his house on the rock. Okay, we understand that. If we're going to have a good foundation, we want it sturdy, we want it strong, we'll build it with everything that we can so that it will never never crumble, that it will never uh, deteriorate, that it will never crack, that it will never lose its, its strength. And here's this man that put it on a rock, and that's what we do. But we're not talking about houses that are being built, we're talking about lives that are being affected by what's going on. Now, what we did as we began this country is that we placed it upon a rock, not just a solid rock that you see on the ground. We placed it on the rock of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's where this nation was built. That's the rock that we had. Now, what's happened over the years is that this foundation upon which they built the Word of God, the power of God, the salvation of Jesus Christ. When that was built, this nation began to grow and it became strong. Let me just interject something for you right quick. Everybody knows that Chris, Christopher Columbus was off course, don't you? If you, read, if you read your history, you know he had no idea where he was. All of a sudden he wound up in a place that he didn't mean to be. Was that by accident? How do you think he got here? It was by the grace and power of Almighty God. God intended to establish a nation, and he did just that. And it all began to build upon this rock. Now what's happened is, is that we as a nation have moved off of this rock. And we have built our own foundations according to what we think and what we think needs to be done. And because that is happening, we've got the home attacking the church, the church attacking the home, the church home attacking the government, the government attacking the home, the church attacking, a church being attacked. All of those things are happening and those attacks are weakening the foundation upon which you and I were built because we're not following, we're not standing on the rock of Jesus anymore. The home attacks the government. It's being attacked by the government. Wow. Because they want us to redefine what marriage is all about. They want us to uh, redefine what gender is. Now, folks, I've never, ever claim to be very smart but would somebody please tell me how in the world that you can't know what the gender of a child is can anybody explain that to me we all know what the gender of the child is and yet we've got people and and right now even in new york state they signed in a law that, that you, whatever you have, whether it's driver's license or anything else, you have to leave a, a space. Male, female, or gee, I just don't know. Something like that. And you can mark that. I look around this room, and I'm going to tell you something. I don't see anybody, gee, I just don't know. 
I can point out male and female, can't you? Amen. We can do that. You see what's happening to us? And the government is attacking us because they want us to do that. And they want us to believe that. They want us to change our lifestyle. And changing that lifestyle means that we are to fit in with whatever is going on. And we're not to say anything about it. And we are to accept that. The church attacks the home. How? By not teaching their children that they're boys and girls. We're turning away from that. All of a sudden we say, well, I'll let them grow up and be whoever they want to be. No, don't do that. And the church needs to stand up and preach the word. God made us male and female. It's in the scripture. And that's who we are. And when we get married, we marry male, female. That's it. And there's no other way to do that. We need to teach the way of the Lord. The government is attacking Trying to silence the church. Because you see, what they're trying to do is take this Bible and what I say, and if I'm contrary to what the world believes, then it's hate speech. And I can be arrested for hate speech. I don't care. Because what they're saying is wrong. It's a sin. It's against God. And folks, if it's against God, we need to turn from that. We need to teach our children the ways of God. The government's trying to silence the church through hate speech. That we attack the home because uh, the the, uh, home attacks the government. Because they want to be taken care of. I want you to give to me. Did you know that right now there are over nearly uh, 10 million unemployed people? 10 million jobs that are open and people are not going back to work and we all know why. Every one of us sitting in here received those checks and they came to us and and back in 2020, you say, oh, well, in a way I can see that. We raise these, these unemployment benefits and we give these people all of this money so that they can stay home because they can't find a job because of COVID. And they were making us drink this Kool-Aid about COVID. And all of a sudden we're finding out that not everything they said was the truth. Does that shock you? It's not the truth. And now we send all of these checks and we send them all uh, into these people. And we've got people that's got so many children and they get X amount of dollars for all of that. And they can live for several months and nobody wants to go to work. That's not hard to figure out. I'm going to tell you something. I may hurt somebody's feelings, but it won't be the first time and it won't be the last. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. We need to get up off of our lazy back ends and get back to work. Put this nation back to work. Put our state back to work and take these checks and throw them away. We are not a socialistic government. I don't want socialism and neither should you. Social medicine doesn't work. Socialism doesn't work. I don't want them to be dependent on the government and have to have them that they where they can tell me what to do and what to say and what I can't do. Don't give me any more money if that's what you want to do because I don't want your money. I want to work and I want to live and I want to live free. Our foundation is shifting. We can't do it. It's time we stood up. It's time we said no. It's time that we made sure that our nation stands strong. We witnessed it again when this Olympic athlete turned their back on our flag and pulled up a t-shirt that said, uh, what was it, athlete? activist and held that down let her stay home let her st- I don't want to represent in this country let her stay home we need people over there that stand for this flag and folks all of these things you know and all of these things we begin we need to put back in our minds and understand that we can't allow ourselves to be torn down like this. 
It should call it common sense. Common sense says if you keep sending this money, then people are going to take it. They're not going to work for it. They're going to sit around like some little baby calf that's looking for mama, and they're going to feed themselves every time they want to off of the government. Now, I've got another question for you. Did you ever stop and ask yourself where this money came from? You know where it came from? It came from a printing press. And they printed just exactly what they needed. They printed all of that out. And you said, yeah, there, there you go. That's what we can do. Would somebody please tell me how we can be how many trillions of dollars in debt and then print two or three trillion more dollars? You see, folks, that money has to be backed up somewhere. And the question you better ask yourself when you think about all of this, who owns us? And who's going to call in the marker? Do you ever think of that? What do we need to do? We need to change and put back under this nation a solid rock that will bless us because we are obedient and we follow Him. The foundation of our home needs to be strengthened. We're, we're fooling ourselves, thinking that the homes are strong. I tell you, in, in the homes today, we've got adults bringing up children and teaching them to be juvenile delinquents, knowing that they, they just turn their back and say, do what you want to, just don't get my name involved in this and, and bring trouble on me. And they just let them go and do and, and, and act any way they want to act and do anything they want to do. But the writer if, uh, of Solomon, or Solomon writing in Psalms 127 said, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I don't know how to build a house and neither do you. But Almighty God knows how to build a house and guess what He does first thing? He lays a foundation and Paul said there's no other foundation that can be laid than that which is laid and that is Jesus Christ. It's time for moms and dads to sit children down and tell them Jesus Christ died for your sins. He wants to save you. Lead them. Show them. Teach them. Pray with them and let them find Christ as their Savior and when they find Christ as their Savior they will grow in, in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord because it is the parents obligation to do that. We don't need to try to figure the gender we don't need to change the lifestyle we just need to get back to the word of almighty god in the home yes. Yes. period Amen. except the lord builds a house there is no foundation men and women don't need to switch roles we don't need women becoming men and men becoming women we don't need some man having surgery and then being named miss miss uh, nevada going on we don't need boys that says i'm a girl and then go compete against girls you know why they do it because they can't win against the boys and they ain't got guts enough to work hard enough to compete with the boys and so they say i want to be a girl so we say okay go do that no and you say what about them children i'll tell you what about them children it's time for mom and daddy to stand up and say, no, that's not going to happen. That's what God wants from us. We establish that as a family, a family that loves each other, a family where dad stands as the dad in the sight of almighty God, because one of these days we'll be judged for our homes. Do we live in our integrity and teach them the right things of God where moms can stand up? And be the mother supporting the family and supporting the man and the man supporting the woman. Loving each other. There's no greater gift that you can give to your children than to see mom and dad love each other. Love each other with all of their heart 
And I'm not talking about just coming in and putting a peck on her cheek every once in a while. I'm talking about loving her and living for her and doing for her and giving to her and giving to the children and making sure that all of those needs are met. Folks, it's time that we make the home the home that God intended it to be. We're time for us to give our children to God and to pray until they receive Christ as Savior. There's no greater gift that you can have than to be able to stand back and say, thank God my children know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Savior. We need to reestablish the foundation of the home. We need to reestablish the foundation of the government back on the Word of God. And when you, when we consider the government, we've got to erect a government that is that belongs to God. Because, folks, the scripture is very plain, and I could read to you scripture after scripture, but one of them is, is in Proverbs. 21 1 and it says the heart of the king is in the hand of god in other words god moves the heart of the king to do things that he doesn't even know what he's doing you say well, we don't have a king i understand that but the leader of our nation his heart is in the hand of god and what some of these guys don't understand is that when they become when they're elected president or senator or congressman when that happens they stand up and they say now i can do what i want to do no you can't you are guided by God. But you see what happens is they pull back. And they say, I will do what I want to do. Which when you look at that. Now don't, don't get mad at me yet. Wait till you get home. When you look at that. We're looking at our, our nation. That says, we are your God. And you do what we say. And don't rock the boat. Don't do that. Now, the last time I checked, we live in a democracy. And the last time I checked, we're free. And the last time I checked, there's still freedom of speech. And the last time I checked, I've got enough common sense to understand some of the things that they're doing. And they pass it all along. And, you know, I, I hear people all the time, and they say, you know, I was watching the news. And when they say that, I stop them right there and say, wait. Quit it. Quit it. Why do you think you're so sad all the time? Quit watching that mess. Because all they do is just like what happened to us when little, what's his name? What, what's his name? Flossy. Yeah. You know the little scientist, the one that lied to us, fed us the Kool-Aid? All of those people, all of them tell you what they think you don't know. And I'm not going to sit and listen to somebody tell me how stupid I am and then say, believe me. Joel Rosenberg is a Messianic Jew. If you don't know what that is, it means that he's been saved by the grace of God, accepting Jesus Christ as his Savior, but he's a Jew. Joel Rosenberg writes um, thriller, mystery books, and, and they're wonderful to read. Joel Rosenberg has, has been over in Jerusalem dealing with all these things that are going on with, with this, the, the government and things over there. But one of the things that he said, and I, I read his little blog every so often, he pointed out 10 different news agencies, and he listed the lies that they told about Israel and this little bombing episode that they had with the Hamas. And how that the Hamas were just peaceful, loving people wanting to blend in with the Jews. That is the biggest lie I've ever heard. And Israel didn't shoot at the Hamas. The Hamas shot at them. Their dome knocked them down. Very few missiles went over there. But they retaliated, and then everybody went crazy. And there is one major news source that refused to cover what was happening in Israel because Israel was defending itself. Now, this hits home to me, and I want you to understand it. We've got congresswomen right now that are anti-Semitic. 
and they're trying to tear down Israel, and they want us to blockade Israel, and they want us to forget Israel, and they want us to back up from Israel, and they don't want any uh, thing to, to happen between us and Israel. I'm going to tell you something, friend. If we ever walk away from Israel, you better hang on to your hat and get in a bomb shelter somewhere because God is not going to let Israel fall. And God is going to protect Israel. And God will bless those who stand with Israel because Israel is the nation of God. God has blessed it. God has made a covenant with them. And God said it's everlasting, which means it's going to be until the Lord comes again. We better stand with Israel or we'll fall in our stupidity. The government needs to stand up and stand firm. They all stand up and say, yay, we're going to defund the police. And all of a sudden, things begin to happen in all of these cities. And they say, gee, where is all the help that we need? Well, you said, get rid of them because they're mean. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of police that do a lot of wrong things. There's a lot of police that do things. And what happened with George Floyd, that, that policeman never should have done that. Never. A lot of things that are happening now because of that. But folks, if we don't have men and women that are willing to stand between us and a lawless society, this nation is going to fall. You're not going to be able to live. Your house can be free reign. You can be killed. You can do this. You can do that. But as long as there are consequences... We can establish laws. But you've got to have somebody that's going to stand up and say, I'm willing to stand in the gap. We need to pray for the police. We need to undergird the police. We need to stand and say, we need you. We don't care. Listen, friend. We don't care what the government thinks we ought to do. When it comes to things like this, it's nothing but common sense. What we should do is stand and see them and say, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. That's common sense. That's what we as Americans need to be, is those of common sense. We need to live wisely. We've got lifestyles that are out of hand and, you know, they, they come up and they say, well, if you don't agree with me, you hate me. I don't hate anybody. And I don't hate anyone. I mean, I like what you're doing. And I'll tell you that. <clears throat> but that's my right to stand up and say that. We need to learn to protect each other. We need to start, learn to stand together and to live according to the things of God. We need to vote with a good sense about us, understanding we don't need socialism. We don't need this. We don't need that. We don't need something else. We need people that are willing to stand on the Word of God and put our government back on a foundation. The foundation of the home and the foundation of the government needs to be re, re, uh, uh, done back on Jesus Christ. But there's one other thing, and don't you forget it. The church needs to redefine its foundation. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're one of the prophets. But you, you, who do you say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of John. Flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you that you are Peter. And upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. On this rock, Peter, not on Peter, not on the disciples, not on you and not on me. The church is built on Jesus Christ. It's not about me. I'm not up here to put on a show. I'm not up here to, to gain uh, popularity. I'm here to tell you what the Scripture says. 
Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. And when you accept Jesus as your Savior, you have that foundation upon which you stand. His name is Jesus. If Jesus is the foundation of the church, and Jesus is the builder of the church, what gives these so-called churches right to do things that are totally contrary to the will of God? We're not here to make people feel good about themselves. We're not here to scratch their back. We're not here to to dress in a way where they they don't think that we're stuffy or that we're, we're out of date, that we're archaic. We're not here to please everybody that comes along and, and we're not here to dodge this thing of sin and to dodge this thing of salvation and just tell everybody, do the best you can and one day you'll get to God. That's not our job. We are to present Jesus Christ, the founder of the church, the one who is coming for the church. And unless you know Jesus, you're not going with him when the bridegroom comes to take the bride. He's the foundation. And folks, his word is to be proclaimed. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, who gives us life. Abundant. Yeah, that's what we want. You need life eternal. That comes through Jesus. Are you going to live for eternity? Or are you going to be separated from God? It all comes where where your foundation is. Folks, when the church gets right, and I want to use a word that you hadn't heard in a long time. When revival comes to the church. Now, you know, people think, well, a, a good revival is just so we can see people saved. That's this part, much part of, of a revival. You see, the word says revive. And you can't revive something as if it hadn't already been vived. So what a revival is, is to touch the hearts of those who've been vived. They've received life. We want to put life back into that. When revival comes to this nation, in the church, folks, we're going to see things happen. And we're going to see God move. And we're going to see God make changes. And God is going to do that when the people of God call by His name, humble themselves, and pray, and seek His face, and turn from their wicked ways. We will hear from heaven. He'll forgive our sins. He will heal our land. And the foundation will be strong. Let's put the foundation back under the church. Let's put the foundation back under the government. Let's put the foundation back under the home. And the foundation is Jesus Christ. And let's stand for him. That is our victory. That is our comfort. That is the truth of God. We stand for him. Don't let the foundation crumble. Let's make sure the foundation is sure. And that's in Christ. Let's pray together. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Moms and dads. It's time for us to teach our children the things of God. So that we can show them the way that they need to live. But we also need to show them Christ in our lives. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want you to open your heart in faith. Man, woman, boy, or girl. If God is speaking to your heart, I want you to pray this prayer with me. To ask Jesus to save you and to come into your heart. So you open in faith and pray right now. Dear Father, I know I'm a lost sinner. I believe Jesus Christ died for me. I believe he rose again. By faith, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of all of my sin. Save me, Lord. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. If you prayed that prayer with me, get up and come.
and say yes to Jesus. If you haven't prayed that prayer and you want to, get up and come down here. I'll meet you here. We'll pray that prayer together. Are you living for Jesus to sure and shore up the foundation of your home, of our church? You see, when people are not faithful to the church and just in and out with all kinds of excuses, the foundation is not as strong as it should be. Maybe it's time for us to just give our life to Jesus and say, I'm willing to serve so that our homes and our government and our church can be strong and the foundation be strong. Would you today come as God speaks to your heart, what's ever on your heart, you come right now. Come, Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to our hearts. Give us the boldness to step out to say yes to you. In Jesus' name, as we stand together and as we sing, I invite you to come. Come now, but come quickly. You come. Savior change you today. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Would you come? Come quickly. Don't let it be delayed. your eyes upon Jesus. Look in his face. Trust him. Don't be afraid. Step out and come. Say yes to him. And the things of earth will grow strange. In the light of His glory and grace. Thank you so much for being here. May the Lord bless you. May our hearts be turned to Him. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Let's bow before Him and surrender to His Lordship. Thank you for sharing this time. Now remember, today is a family Sunday, we call it at Central and it means we want you to stay home with your family and enjoy them on this day. There'll be nothing here tonight. We will be back Wednesday night uh, studying in the fourth chapter of Second Corinthians. Come and join us there as we study God's Word together. And then next Sunday we'll be here and we'll be back in the book of Revelation. So you come and be a part of that and invite somebody to come with you. Be here for Sunday school as well. Thank you. We love you and we appreciate you. And thank you for sharing this day with us. And most of all, thank you for remembering this was red, white, and blue Sunday right here. <laughs> Anything else? Let's join hands across the auditorium and let's sing together. Love somebody in the name of the Lord. Be a witness every day. Let the love of Christ come shine through. As you travel on your way Oh, let us be a beacon in the darkness of the world Shining with the light of Jesus' love Set our souls on fire and fill us with your power Shower us with blessings from above